All right, we're starting a new live stream and I switched to the camera on my Chromebook and I'm hoping that the resolution is not as nice and therefore can offer a speed that prevents lagging. And so we'll wait for some folks to join. I did about 12 minutes on the previous uh, live stream and then we decide, I decided uh, the lag might be worth um, uh, re, uh, starting a new stream. All right, Mike, thank you for the report. I am using my Chromebook uh, camera there. And um, I, immediately, I looked around to see if I could change the resolution on my uh, other camera that's better positioned, but it uh, didn't become quickly available how to do that. And so I'll look into that for next time in more detail. All right, I've uh, been talking now for a minute. Mike, any lagging yet? Or anybody else? We've got two people online now. Uh, and while you type in your answer there, Mike, or other people. Um, okay, very good. Danny reports and Linus. Hey, Linus, welcome. Uh, Mike, last year, I think I got fifth place fifth place, and I won, I was so blessed to receive a Declaration Grooming B4 uh, brush, and the handle was made by that darn Rob, and I, I use it to this day, and it's a wonderful piece. Okay, excellent, very good, very good. Okay, so let's recap right quick. Oh man, now this synthetic really sucked up the water into itself. So this is an alpha synthetic, um, when it was dry, man, this thing is, it's, it's almost as bad as like a tuxedo knot. I'm probably not going to be enjoying it unless I switch to just uh, painting strokes. It's probably what I'll have to do. And uh, the aftershave is Orangilla from the uh, w, uh, West Coast Shaving. And I think it's, uh, uh, I keep thinking Turner and Hooch, but it's tallow and steel. Um, and this is a, uh, neither of these items I have used before. And the soap, first line shave as a recap, Delmar Boulevard. And I have not used that brand before. And that is abiding with the uh, terms of today's theme for the lather games. Uh, I do actually have an alpha brush. It's that alpha bully boy. And I put my own uh, knot in it. Or no, it, it came with a fader knot. It was one of those custom custom orders. Uh, no, it was a group buy. It was a group buy. Uh, and I'm using as a razor the 13 from Gibbs. And this is the only razor that Gibbs made apparently that fits normal DE blades. And so I just pop my NASA in it. It's got the plus and the minus. I'll be using the minus side today. Most likely it's uh, the silvery part is aluminum. The black part there is plastic. So it's very head focused, very head heavy. And it's a new in box. And so in accordance to today's theme with the soap, I'm matching my other products as best I can. And this is a razor that's never been used by anybody, much less me. And I uh, unwrapped it in a recent mail call um, video. And today we are using, the NASIP has obviously been used before, 370, um, uh, nine, eight, nine, 379 is today's count for the, the Nasset blade. And I guess for posterity, in case that other stream gets lost or something, I'll show you the blade. It's got my dots in there and all that. Yeah, the, um, the razor, the other one, um, somebody talked about they were wanting to get it, but then because of my review on the, uh, the other Gibbs that I tried that was plus and minus, it didn't match what he thought, and so he didn't, he didn't buy it. That may have been Refined Edge. Uh, I can't remember who uh, it was, but yeah, somebody picked it up. I don't know if it was my uh, publicity, my uh, uh, talking to you guys and publishing a video about it. They got it sold, but they did sit there for months. Uh, waiting. All right, so I'm looking forward to trying this. Um, so I've never used this brush before. I have never used this uh, splash before. And the fragrance for today is Southern Witchcraft's, Southern Witchcraft's Anthropophagy. 
and I've never used, I don't think I've used this um, EDP yet. I believe I've used the splash only. I could be wrong on that, but that's as close as I can come with my current inventory. All right, so I have scooped in a quarter teaspoon of the soap. It's pretty soft. First line, Del Mar Boulevard. It's a nice kind of cologne type, aquatic type scent. I definitely wouldn't mind uh, having that. And then we are, I think we're all set to go. Let me splash my face. Uh, cool thing about the Gibbs, uh, many of those were uh, either brass or stainless steel. And this one is aluminum. The, uh, uh, the head is, was stated to be aluminum. So, man, this thing's going to last forever, right? That's why it looks so great when it's unused in the box. It's just not going to corrode. Um, so I haven't used this synthetic before. It looks really um, backbony, kind of like a tuxedo knot. But like the tuxedo, the tips feel very soft and enjoyable. So if I keep it to painting strokes, then I might end up with uh, something like a comfy shave. So let's... We, we see some immediately some of that water come out of the brush and start working and making a, a wet mess, but that's okay. Man, I can feel the backbone. I may have to get back in to the uh, sample there because a quarter teaspoon this is not thickening up very much at all and so this could be a soap base that needs more product yeah I've got a good shave Mac um, I've got the two band and it, the tips aren't super soft but they aren't as, as treated as others so they're not jelly and I think I kind of like that I think the bank, the uh, the backbone's okay. A little on the strong side for me, but but I think it's still within the realm of making me happy. It's got a, a green jade, faux jade kind of look to it. It's not something that uh, I use a lot. I think it's I've got it stored away. Yeah, this looks like, and this is why I do a quarter teaspoon because I do not have a lot of product here. Now it looks nice. It just took a while to whip together. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to need more soap than this. I'm going to take my tea, quarter teaspoon and why don't we just go with another quarter teaspoon. Now, since the soap is wet, since the bowl is wet, I can't really press it in, but this is pretty soft. Um, uh, yeah, Mike is collecting aquatic soaps. I saw a post, I was just reading a post earlier today about uh, maybe it was on Badger and Blade or something like that. Somebody talking about their aquatics um, list, you know, what somebody said, hey, I got this aquatic and I really like it. What are some other aquatics? Uh, La Marche du Rassage or something like that it was one from Katie's Bubbles that somebody mentioned. I'm not going to be able to press this and have it stay into the bottom, but hopefully this brush is kind of stiff enough to where it can work this lather up here. Danny, I think you're right. The Yaki brushes offer a really good value in general. I'm really happy with my silver tip from Yaki. A lot of people are happy with the synthetics they're getting from Yaki. My all-time favorite razor. Oh, my two-band from Yaki. I'm pretty happy with that, too. Uh, my all-time favorite razor. It's got to be my Carve, Christopher Bradley. Um, it's just so flexible. It's so smooth. Now I can start. Um, I didn't load up my jigger in preparation for today's show. Here we go. Normally try to preload it. But I was so 
involved in switching gears to do the live shave that I missed it. Um, so the car was probably my favorite. Um, I like my, uh, the, I love the look and feel of the WR2s from Wolfman. Um, but the car is, is smoother for me because it has uh, better, better gaps that offer me tons of comfort. And so that's why it's kind of at the top of the list. The Fatip Gentile, the closed comb Fatip razors are just amazing. I just enjoy those so much. Yeah, Mike, I, I think I saw you. Uh, I think you might have posted on my video about how to remove a knot. Yeah, and you said you got the fine bowl. Yeah. Uh, I did not get, Danny, all of the base plate options for the carve, but I got pretty much all of them that come close to applying to me. I've, uh, I got all of the solid bar from double A up to maybe F. Um, and then I got the open cones probably from A, up to maybe D, um, the the E and the F in the solid bar, I don't actually uh, ever plan to use. I only use them when I had this type of, um, uh, when I have this type of old blade. Um, with a normal blade, anything past D on the card is too rough for me to use. And even now, this is a low structure lather. Even now with twice as much soap as normal, it's uh, staying pretty gluey, nothing wrong with that. It just means you're gonna have to use up more product for this kind of lather, uh, for, for this on a kind of soap base. And uh, well, we haven't added very much water. Yeah, the Chromebook has a lower resolution. HD shaves, welcome, sir. Ah, uh, very good. Very good. I'm glad it looks good to you, too. <laughs> Actually, um, I've got a decent phone, sort of. Um, it's just that I need to get to have a thousand subscribers before I can publish with the phone. And I don't, I, uh, it looks, I did the math. I'm, uh, I'm getting about 18 subscribers per month. And with that, at that rate, in about nine months, I should hit a thousand. We'll have to have a giveaway or something. Yeah, this is a very low structure, gluey kind of lather. And uh, so maybe they have ingredients. In, first line here has ingredients for skincare and that kind of thing. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, sir. Oh, sort of. You, you, uh, you might have not have been watching the last couple of months because I wanted to try using the... A jigger. This is a 40 milliliter jigger, and I fill it up prior to the shave, and then I uh, I just check them. I check it and do some subtraction at the end of the shave to know how much water I used. And I like it better than the syringe in general. It um, because I don't have to count how many times I've refilled the syringe. This I'm able to do all in one shot, and that way, if I forget with the syringe, I have to rewatch the video that kind of thing. So, uh, but this is not as good as at adding a few drops of water as the syringe, but in general, I'm liking this quite a bit. Almost done with this lather, I think. Danny K got the brass carve. That four inch handle is kind of long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny because I would say that, that it, that handle is long and then you would say that as well. It is pretty long. I settled on mine. The 3.5 inch was a little long, but it balanced really well. But then they finally came out with a three and a quarter inch handle, and that's perfect for me. Yeah, isn't that wild, HD? That's just crazy. I totally didn't expect to have subscribers when I started this channel. I really didn't. I think that's pretty neat. All right, get my face wet. And I think this is like uh, I just did my 1214th video or something to that effect. So <laughs> there's a ton of them out there. Sora said, uh, oh, if you've gone back to the shaving like our grandpa. What are you talking about, Sora? 
What, did your grandpa use a jigger? Which uh, grandpa aspect are we talking about here? Now, with this synthetic, the tips really are wonderfully soft, but there is tons of backbone and too much spring. So that's the price I pay for trying to make my brush be on theme as well as my soap. You know, um, my kids don't really watch my videos. My son has been in a few of my videos. He's been on at least two, maybe more. And we, we did one maybe a month ago or something. We were shaving side by side. We went to the big bathroom when we did that. And Mr. Fernandez, I, uh, you told me how to pronounce your name, your first name, uh, once, and I, I can't remember. It's not in my, I never use that pronunciation for anything else, like mayor or something like that. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, this is a very, a very wet lather, but it's, it's got a little bit of density to it, some viscosity there. Yeah, it's got a gluey feel. Feels pretty slick. Maybe not as slick as, you know, some of the older school soaps that don't have as many skin care ingredients in them, but it should do the job nicely. <laughs> Fine grain sugar daddy, yeah. <laughs> He, uh, yeah, what was uh, some people, a few people suggested names from my side, you know, he was wearing a, uh, a sports team with a catfish on it for the local Mudcats baseball team. And somebody called him catfish, you know, and, and uh, somebody else said uh, something like Sugar Daddy Jr. or something like that. But yeah, fine grain. Yeah. Call him Scruffy because <laughs> I'm sure his beard, like mine, when I was when I was a teenager, it came in really scary scraggly and sparse you know all right well this is my first time using and you know what take a look at the head look at that triangle nature to it it looks so much like the live head that wcs put out like a year ago or something the workmanship looks pretty good there are some leftover stamping burrs from the aluminum process maybe not stamping but you know grinding or whatever but in general it looks the buff on it is tremendous, so it looks good. All right, here we go. Let's try it out. And this is a, I mean, this is not a good representation of what this razor is going to feel like since we are using such an old blade, but it is what it is. Not tuggy. And that is saying something. Almost all blades, um, it, it does feel like it has a little bit of aggression to it, more so than some of the razors I've been using. So I'll just try to be careful with it. The minus plate, as I was saying before, on my other Gibbs was not a mild setting, but it was kind of a medium aggression setting. Yeah, I'm not getting any tugging, so... We're just going to have to check the shave at the end and see if we've gotten it close enough. All right. Pretty good residual slickness. Not too bad. Uh, the, the razor moved pretty well, so I think this... Uh, lather is, is nice and highly functional and enjoyable, slick and all that. Since this lather is kind of wet, kind of gluey and stuff, I am not using the plus side. I decided to go with the minus. And based on that first pass, I'm glad I did. That was the right decision. 
And because this is a high backbone synthetic brush, I don't really like this handle either. Um, it, my fingers are feeling kind of kind of put uh, restrained. You've got this bump, and there's not really very much of a saddle right here for your finger pads to sit into. And so this ramp pushes your fingertip into this uh, little other ramp right here. And I don't really have, it's so round and short. It, it's kind of doing a decent job of keeping my fingers away from the lather, but I don't really like the feel of this, uh, this shape. I don't know with this handle if it is a, it came as a part of a lot purchase, and I don't know if it's pricey or, or their cheap version, you know. I know they do some really cool looking handles. But I don't know where this one falls. It, I mean, it feel it looks like a quality handle. The the buff on it, the grind, and all that looks like good work. It just happens to be a, a design that doesn't fit my hand too well. I do have a bigger sized hand than most folks. Ha. Oh, now that's true. Danny remembers that this blade has a has an error on it and I oh I did put it on the minus side <laughs> so I'm actually shaving the uh, um, the blade has a, a bend in it and it is on the minus side how about that we'll just keep it there all right let's do cross grain now and we'll know that the shave would be even smoother because this um, it doesn't have a ton of support from the bottom of the blade close to the edge, but I'm not getting a ton of uh, vibration and uh, chatter from it. A little more so than usual, but. So right now it's very comfortable, no tugging. Maybe it's too mild. Maybe I'm going to get a, maybe I'm going to need to do a plus pass on this next one. Yeah, we still got some stubble to go. Let's switch to the plus on this next one. Yeah, the mild is not taking down the hair uh, quickly enough, and that's why it's so comfortable. Uh, 225, I think, was the, uh, uh, yeah, sort of the uh, use number 225. Um, I uh, fumbled, and the, whatever razor I was using, the blade was still attached to the head, and the head fell, um, the top cap. And so when the blade hit the ground, it bent the blade. I did bend it back some. And uh, and it's so it's usable, but I can tell which side I, get, I usually get a little bit more aggression. So maybe it's actually fortuitous that I put the smoothest side on the plus because that's where I need the most comfortable shave is on the aggressive side, right? Depression area area. Uh, I don't think so. Um, what are some examples? of that kind of lifestyle. You're saying that because I'm using a blade so many times. I'm making the work harder. Yeah, Danny, you got the last two digits, right? I've said it on so many shaves. I, it's probably imprinted on some of you guys' psyche. Sugar Daddy trivia. Yeah, as long as I keep it with the painting motions, this is a a soft, comfortable, enjoyable brush, and I could see why people would use these, but I like to scrub. Okay, so this is the, I'm gonna try the plus side now. Yeah, using a bent blade, <laughs> that's right. Now you knew, I did see a YouTube video years ago where the lady was talking about what she made for her kids to survive, maybe in that era, it was this old lady. It was this meal of hot dog chunks and potato chunks and maybe onion chunks or something like that. And she would just mix it in the pot, uh, in the skillet, cook it up. And that was a meal. And the um, and then the person 
narrating the video or something said that it's a fond part of um uh, of her upbringing um because that it's it just it's old memories and family togetherness and things like that uh okay gotcha yeah i tried that recipe a few times all right let's do cross grain now this is the aggressive side of the head I think we're getting some work done here. Seems to be pretty easy to, oh, 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 right there on that curve, I generated some tenderness. I don't think it's going to bleed, but I can tell that's going to be a tender spot, I think. You need to be careful. You need to be careful. Slow down a little bit. Watch my angle and pressure. So this seems to be a pretty flexible razor for people who want aggression. They should be able to get it. Well, what am I saying? I can't shave with a blackbird and I'm shaving with this. So definitely more aggressive razors out there than this. Now with this plus side, I'm going to be a little bit more cognizant as I shave the bottom here. Sometimes, you know, these gluey lathers have a little bit of resistance. They're not as, as slick with these kind of oily skincare bits that are put in there. And so they can actually slow down my razor. And I don't believe the error here is that I've gotten it too dry. If anything, it's uh, a little on the wetter side. And we might have a little bit of weeping on that mold that I cut the other day. The head heavy focus, I believe it's not really bothering me too much. I think that's working out okay. Um, the, the weight being all on the head. I wish it were a little different, you know, in, the, in a perfect world, but I think it's working out all right. So that's three passes. Oh, yes. See, this double has definitely been changed. Uh, so that plus is the way to go with this old blade. I bet with a newer blade, I'm sure that minus is where I would want to stay. Oh, uh, yeah, Peter, we did actually have to close down. I closed down the feed, the original feed after 12 minutes uh, because we we're getting some lag. I, I think my system was not able to push out that HD video uh, at a rate that was acceptable and so a lot of guys were having good audio but the video was a little bit laggy so i turned off that stream started a new one with a different camera that seems to have a more uh, friendly resolution didn't do anything prior to the shave like wash my face just splashes of water as usual I'm glad I added the extra soap into the lather because I am needing these other passes here. Hey, um, sort of, if you're still around, I was using the, uh, old type yesterday for day one and that actually handled this nasset really well i was starting to think so many blades i was using um so many razors i was using for this blade that they were causing me to have to do an against the grain pass here uh, which was starting to feel tuggy i was thinking oh maybe it's about time to flip over this blade and start using the other side of it and see how long we can go you know we've gone on side a as long as we can but the old type was really nice with it. It may have been the best shave with this blade at this age. So I think the old type might give it new life after the lather games, but we'll have to see. Yeah, there you are, man. Okay, so fourth pass. I'm going to stick with the plus. I'll have to be careful. Ooh. 
Yeah, I think this has given me the closeness that I, I'm going to be happy with here. Yeah, that's pretty good. My neck, I'll have to be careful though. All right, let's uh, cross grain here from the other side. See if we can get away with that. So this does seem to be a razor that that uses this nasset blade pretty well. But it's got a good bit of aggression to it because I'm having to use the plus side. And it's not actually a problem on my cheeks. I'm able to control it pretty easy. Not a problem, not, not scrapey or tuggy. It doesn't feel tenuous. It doesn't feel like the blade's vibrating down my cheek. Pretty good residual slickness right there. I was able to go back and address the area over here. All right, now. There we go. Now, um, we may not even need to do. Nah, let's do an against the grain stroke right there and see how this razor does it. The Sterling stainless steel razor was so aggressive, it was not very friendly on the ATG pass uh, with this blade. And this has a maybe similar exposure. And so I uh, am curious how this will go. All right, ATG, plus side or minus side? Plus seems to be cutting better. Let's try the plus. Skin tightening, but not over tightening. A little bit at a time. Seems to work best for me. Ooh, a little tender there. And there we go. Well, I'm looking forward to this Gibbs and shading with it with more normal blades. I think the plus side is probably going to be a little bit too aggressive for me with all that exposure, but uh, the minus might be somewhere in mid ground, you know. Danny, yes. What if I got another 400 shaves when I flip the blade? <laughs> I bet that's not going to happen, but that would be funny. Uh, no, sir. Uh, sir, I have not dropped the blade on anything. Um, I know that uh, Mirna183 on subreddit, you know, on Reddit, um, he did strop, and I'm glad he did because that gave people a different, uh, something else to compare it to. You know, I'm not stropping mine. He did strop his. He was able to go a long way. He's probably able to get more comfortable shaves than I did. He was using a different blade, though. But no, I'm not stropping it on anything. <laughs> yes, I did get my money's worth on this blade. That's for sure. 2018 is when I started using it. Um, yeah, uh, one of you uh, Reddit guys, um, I bought something from from you guys, and uh, and he he sent me an index card with a Nasset blade tape to it. And he said, I'm also including a year supply of blades. <laughs> so that was pretty good. All right, rinse. All right. Very cool. Oh, hey, let me not forget to get to the challenge for today. I talked about it in the first part of the shave. Uh, maybe in that first 12 minutes that had to be in the other video. Um, I mentioned that the, the goal was to come up with some suggestions. 
uh, for the lather games, like those theme days that they have. Uh, they do not get a lot of input. And, um, uh, and so they are making it a challenge so that they can actually get uh, more people's input. And so that's the challenge for today. I did come up with a few. Uh, and some of them seem like decent ideas, and some of them maybe not. Uh, Soro says, uh, Persona 74, I do have one of those blades. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it was Old Hiker or uh, somebody like that that said that when I started using that tungsten blade, um, he said, yeah, uh, we're, we're going to see you in like 10 years with this blade, you know, <laughs> probably something like you, 10,000 uses, right? <laughs> Hey, welcome, Seth. All right, uh, so my suggestions, accomplishing now the daily challenge for day two of the Lather Games. Uh, here we go. Um, I, these are just ideas that I had. Maybe somebody could work off of them. Hey, you guys, wait till this is done. If you have an idea for a theme day of the Lather Games, uh, put it in, probably not this chat stream because that's gonna be harder to look and find. Um, and then, uh, if you put it in the normal comments when this video goes into the normal area, uh, then I can record them and uh, copy them over to maybe help the Lather Games for next year in case you're not a Reddit uh, active person and would want to do that yourself. And Seth, thank you very much. You have found me well. Uh, my first suggestion, what about a uh, addressing the problem with the weekend uses, Barrister Man, Mammoth, Maggards, and Declaration Grooming are all tremendous favorites on IRC and active in the sub. And so it's, it's rightfully good. They should have special days. And I agree with that fully. But unfortunately, there's a negative side of that. Uh, that means on days like a, um, a sub exclusive, on days where you're matching the set, on days where it's something that might get you lucky, on the theme days of spring, fall, summer, on that desert island day. If you're trying to use a different maker every day, then all of those themes that I just mentioned, that means I can't use a Bear Stern Man soap on those days. That means I can't use a Declaration Grooming soap on those days. Uh, and so maybe something to the effect of, instead of giving one day to where that's your Bear Stern Man day, what if you got double points that day for whichever day you use Barrister and Man in or triple points or, you know, and that would give them the recognition uh, and the honor that uh, that they deserve. Uh, but potentially then you could use them, um, you know, for like, uh, you know, if you've got a uh, a fall soap by declaration grooming, uh, maybe dark fall or something like that, that I just totally love. You know, I'd love to bring that to the lather games. Well, I can't because uh, on Declaration Grooming Day is the only day I can use that, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's one suggestion. Uh, now, I have three others. The uh, To have a day dedicated to the gear and soap that you consider to be a best value, your best value. And the goal would be to benefit new users or users with small pocketbooks who come into the hobby that could look at this specific information and see brushes that don't cost very much but give great return on their investment, um, soaps that give a lot of uses per, uh, you know, um, per uh, tub, um, and, uh, and razors that shave well, even though maybe they're only $15. I mean, this kind of stuff is available online anyway, but I thought it might be cool to have a day for that. Um, and of course, it would make people who don't have huge collections, but who have modest collections, uh, you know, put forth some of their modest gear and, and enjoy the games maybe a little bit more. Um, uh, a scent narrative day, and that's a bad name maybe, but... Uh, A lot of times I don't have the matching aftershave product to the soap. And so what about a, 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 a day where you mismatch, but it's an awesome mismatch. Like the, the, it, tell, it takes you on a trip. The, and I've had these happen. I believe I used a, a, a lavender and something soap. And then I had an oud type or agar wood 
splash or a bomb at the end. And holy cow, the match there, it was tremendous. And so maybe it's a thing where these two cents join together to make something awesome. You know, your soap and your aftershave become something awesome at the end of the shave. Maybe it's a thing where one dies and then the other one becomes more dominant, but it's a wonderful transition that is intentional and, and one that you particularly enjoy. You know, that's my uh, scent narrative day suggestion. And then lastly, blind eval day, maybe come up with a better title. Um, where you pick another shaver uh, in, or, I mean, a bunch of shavers could get together and do some kind of ring transfer or something like that, uh, where you mark a soap sample with some kind of code and then you send it to another shaver and vice versa, they would send you something. You use it on that day and you evaluate, you try to figure out the notes, almost like declaration grooming puzzle. Uh, you try to figure out the notes, maybe even try to figure out what soap base it is, what maker it could be. And and then you, that's part of your, your day. And then uh, maybe at the, after you've posted, then you your your other person could jump in and say, yeah, man, you nailed it. That was Barrister and Man Diamond or, you know, whatever. And so that's my last uh, suggestion. So that's my I, that's me accomplishing my challenge for today and also just uh, letting my face rest for a minute to see if, number one, the lather uh, dried up on my face, started having an itchy feeling um, uh, to let it soak in to see how my face would be left afterwards and very good results there. No itchiness or at all. So obviously, we've got some skincare goodies going on with this uh, particular soap base from First Line. Um, and the scent, let's evaluate the scent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not strong. Uh, at least my sample was not strong, but enjoyable. It wasn't super present during the shave. Thank you, Peter. Um, uh, it is, it didn't really morph too much away from a, uh, a nice, maybe partly aquatic, uh, cologne type scent. Yeah. I, uh, I like it. I mean, it's, it's not too characteristic. Um, it's possible. I mean, when you name something after a location, I would think there are going to be uh, more notes in it than just colony kind of notes. You know, I would think that there are some uh, like uh, from Mammoth, Mood Indigo is a tribute to jazz and uh, it's got a little bit of pepperiness to it uh, and some uh, some sweet notes. And it's you, you know, maybe having a hard time. So you go to a jazz club and you chill out and you realize, hey, I'm not alone. And, and it's just, it lifts you up a little bit. And, um, and that pepperiness kind of reminds you maybe of the smoke that might be around in the lounge or club or whatever. But uh, uh, anyway, so there's a story like that for that. Uh, and, and they're much more distinctive, discernible notes. Uh, with that particular one that is involved in the music heritage. And so this one isn't quite that way with Delmar Boulevard. All right. Hey, let's see how well Anthropophagy from Southern Witchcrafts plays with the Delmar Boulevard. Uh, the Delmar right now is present, but very lightly. And so I think it's going to agree with just about anything you could put on afterwards because it would overshadow. I'm just going to put the frag on my wrists. I'm a computer worker and I enjoy doing that ever since I got some advice, maybe from USS SpongeBob um, uh, to put it on. And of course, we all know that the wrists is where ladies put on their uh, cologne, but uh, but he, he mentioned some places to put it on. And I started putting it on my wrists. And while I'm working, I'm off often looking at my screen with my hands up near me and I don't go nose blind to the scent. If I put it on my on my neck area or face area, I go nose blind pretty quickly to just about anything. But when it's on my wrists, I, I'm greeted with it at various points for several hours afterwards for most colognes. And it makes me very happy. I enjoy that quite a bit. It's uh, very wearable here. It's 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 different than the uh, and so it's not really a good smooth transition but it fit the theme and I do enjoy it. It's not clashing at all, uh, but, and, and uh, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Now this ED, EDP, 
it reminds me of gray flannel. There's a cotton aspect to this, uh, the anthropophagy scent. And but the thing is, the gray flannel has almost this feminine powdery note to it that the anthropophagy doesn't. And so I get kind of what I like about the gray flannel from Jeffrey Bean, but not what I don't like. And that is the anthropophagy. A little bit of Tonka in there. Yeah, I don't think I've tried this before because I'm smelling different things that I'm used to. So I, maybe this does. Maybe this is on theme. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to clean up and how much, how much water did I use? Not very much compared to the amount of soap I used just 15 teaspoons. I'm sorry, 15 uh, milliliters. So that's, uh, uh, three, three teaspoons. Oh, the splash. I've got to use the splash. I went straight to the frag. So this is, this may, uh, no, because I applied the frag on my wrists. So orangilla. Let's see if orange goes with. This is uh, Palo and Steel. So medicinally speaking, maybe it'll help out. Maybe it's orange and vanilla, and I believe there may be some vanilla in the anthropophagy. The orange in here is not not dominant. It's weird, funky. It's not jumping out at me immediately as something that I like. That's what you get when you try something new, right? I'm very glad I got the extra soap because I, yeah, there's some funkiness. I might have to reapply the um, the EDP just to get some, yeah, this is weird. Nah. Mm, yeah, funk, not a good funk. There's some scents that have some purposeful funk, and I, and I like it, but not this one. Um, so nice, gluey uh, soap base here. A wet lather. It performed well, seemed to protect well, gave me good slickness. Happy with that. And I did stay with the paint strokes, and that made me happy with the uh, with the brush. Uh, you guys, as, as I start to clean up here, come up with any questions if you have any, and then we'll, we'll shut her on down. Seth, yeah, man, I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you found your way here and your schedule worked out. Ah, Danny had his first cold water shave today. Yes, sir. Did you find it refreshing and soothing? I hope so. And I'm going to start uh, cleaning up. Uh, this razor gave me a surprise when I showed it to you guys in the mail call video because when uh, this black handle is permanently attached to the uh, bottom of the base plate here and so when the head starts to come off and you think maybe like uh, like a timeless razor or carve that the handle is going to become disengaged it's not and so what happened was the head popped off and actually dropped it but now i know what to expect and it's fine so this razor used the nasset pretty well. Not as good as some of the other razors, but not too bad. Um, so, all right. It was it was comfortable for the most part. The against the grain pass was a little bit on the tuggy side, not enjoyable, but the uh, nasset continues to live another day. And here is the, here's the Gibbs. The, we have two little rails there to keep that blade uh, aligned properly. And they did work very well. Here's the top of the head there. Plenty big slots for soap drainage. Yeah, Danny, man, that cool water just really reduces irritation and inflammation. And of course, we know that's what cold does is it reduces inflammation. And so it's especially wonderful to uh, enjoy that during the shave. We do have some writing here on the base plate. It says REF 13. And we know 13 is the model. So maybe REF is uh, what the French like to use for model. And then made in France. On the bottom, we don't have anything. 
So that's a neat little piece of history. I never saw it offered until I saw it on eBay. And I, wa- I went back and forth with it uh, because it's a little on the pricey side. Um, and it, it stayed on eBay for quite a while. And so I thought, oh, there's not a lot of demand for it. Um, but then I discovered he had multiples. And so I don't know if he started out with five and then he gradually would sell them. Or if he started out with two and I, I, I got the first one, I'm not real sure. All right, so that's done. So we've got Peter Cook in South China. And uh, Danny, you told me once where you were. Are you in the UK? I can't remember. I know Peter Sutcliffe is on the in the UK. Now I don't know um, about the synthetic knots. Uh, many, um, many of these knots. It's hilarious. You can go to some uh, some maker and get a synthetic knot on their custom handle and they make it out to be they tell some big story about the knot you know and it's really the same three dollar knot that yaki brushes have you know um now this and a lot of times you can recognize it by the color if it's uh, kind of a tan down here and then darker then that's probably that plasson type knot if it's black and then white tips that's usually the tuxedo but this one, I don't recognize the color. It almost uh, resembles that knot by uh, like Muley that I think I've seen uh, on a few, uh, maybe on a Rudy Vey brush that I, that I saw. Um, again, very soft tips. If you like a lot of backbone, this is probably a good knot for you. Um, but this is definitely a brush I'll be passing on to another shaver. It's, it's got a, a weight to it. It's got a heaviness, some gravitas to it. It's pretty... All right. Uh, Danny, um, yes, I really enjoy when I rinse my razor in uh, in the cool water uh, because as it's moving across your skin, it's soothing and reducing inflammation, uh, kind of like the fighters that have the, the, the corner man has those metal uh, things that they press on to reduce the swelling and stuff. Uh, and, and so it, it really, I find it very helpful when the razor is a little bit cool as well. Now, I've, I have shaved with a warmer razor too, and that has its own comfort and benefits, but I, I usually like the cool a little bit better. All right. That will be a good brush for somebody. That's for sure. It is a good brush. It just doesn't match my needs. All right. The orange, uh, I am smelling a little bit of the orange, um, but this is funky. I don't care for this. It is a limited edition, apparently. Orangilla. Is it supposed to be vanilla and orange? Is that what it is? I don't know. I don't really smell uh, vanilla. Okay, guys. I think we're good. Um, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, and this is just the start of an awesome month of shaves and talking to you guys. Uh, wow, really looking forward to it. Um, I think we'll go ahead and shut down. Um, uh, post any questions that you might have right quick. Now, Peter, you might be exactly right. Um, the G4 or 5, yeah, that, uh, that might be what it is. Um, and so to me, it's pretty much just a tuxedo knot. Uh, let me look at it now with that knowledge, because it's got tons of backbone uh, in terms of, see, look, it pushes, it would push my skin if I, if I would have done uh, scrubbing motions and reverse directions. Um, you know what? It, it is different from the tuxedo knot because the, if you look in the fibers, 
you can see a waviness that they've built into the fibers. But it's not a tight waviness like the tuxedo has. But I would compare it pretty well to the tuxedo. I, uh, but I'm not an expert on synthetics. Uh, seeing their nuances is not something for me to really be a good authority on. But it's basic. If you like tuxedos, then maybe this one's for you. But I do not, and it's not for me. But as usual, these tips, you know, on so many of these synthetics, um, these tips are very, uh, very, very soft. Uh, it's got a lot of density here at the base of the knot. You know, they, they've uh, they've had that glue bump there, and there's a you know intentionality with spreading it out in a cone shape, and you can feel that thickness right there. You would definitely have a hard time if you wanted to push this deeper into the handle, because uh, I don't think the knot would let you. Uh, and so for people who like the tuxedos, I can see that them liking uh, this type of this type of knot for sure, the G4 or G5. Thank you for that. I think I think you're probably right, Peter. Washing out my soap cup, rinsing it out. We'll see if you guys have any questions before we go. Um, I think if I if I were to end the chat now and you guys were to pop in with a question, I, I don't think I can type once I end the chat. However, if you wait until the uh, video goes on the website, then you can go into the normal comment area, the non-chat, the normal message area, and leave a question if you have uh, something like that. Uh, so notable for the first line shave, it did take kind of twice as much soap as it, over two times as much soap as other uh, brands. So that may put it kind of close to Holy Cow, uh, maybe also near, um, probably not as bad as uh, Chisel Face Silk Tallow though. All right. I think we are ready to close things down. Yeah, I think the color scheme can be used uh, for the recognition. Yeah. All right, everybody. So glad you joined. Uh, we'll shut everything down for now. Uh, have a good night, and we'll see you in a day.